In this video, we unravel the impending decision facing newly elected Senegalese President Faye whether to renew or terminate the lopsided Western Agreement which permits EU vessels to exploit Senegalese waters. With the agreement set to expire in 2024, later in the video we look at why President Faye should immediately terminate it. In July 2023 reports emerged of young Adama and Musa, along with 37 other passengers. They embarked on a journey from the coastal village of Fastboy in Senegal to the Canary Islands, a Spanish archipelago over a thousand miles away. Their vessel, a traditional Senegalese fishing boat, set sail with the hopes and dreams of its occupants, most of whom hailed from fishing backgrounds. Left with no fish to catch at home, they set out in search of a better life. For five weeks, their boat drifted aimlessly across the vast expanse of the North Atlantic. Battling malnutrition and dwindling supplies, the passengers faced a grim reality as death claimed the lives of their companions one by one. In August, after five weeks at sea, Adama and Musa were rescued by a Spanish fishing boat as the survivors of the ordeal. This is the story of many in the fishing community of Senegal. In essence, the Senegal fishing agreement with the West epitomizes the injustices often inherent in international resource extraction agreements. It reflects a power imbalance where wealthy nations exploit the natural resources of developing countries for their own gain while offering token gestures of aid in return. At the heart of the Senegal fishing agreement with the West are quotas set for EU fishing companies. They are authorized to harvest 10,000 tons of lucrative tuna fish annually, along with an additional 1,750 tons of hake. These quotas represent a substantial extraction of marine resources from Senegal's waters, resources that are vital for the food security and economic well-being of its coastal communities. If you like the video I produce on this channel, take a little time to like and share and subscribe to the channel. According to the details of the agreement published on the online EU page, Senegal is promised a meager 2.6 million euros in aid per year. This figure pales in comparison to the value of the 10,000 tons of tuna fish to be harvested every year. To put this into perspective, let's consider the economic value of the tuna fish alone. Take a conservative average price of $10 per kilogram of tuna fish in the U.S. wholesale market. The 10,000 tons of tuna harvested annually would amount to a staggering $100 million. This means that for a mere fraction of the actual value of the extracted resources, Senegal forfeits control over its waters and marine biodiversity. Furthermore, the agreement exempts Western fishing companies from acquiring or paying for fishing licenses, as well as from any form of taxation to Senegal. This exemption exacerbates the inequality inherent in the agreement, allowing foreign companies to profit immensely while contributing little to the development or sustainability of Senegal's fisheries sector. The consequences of the fishing agreement are dire for Senegal's local fishing communities. They face depleted fish stocks, increased competition for limited resources, and diminished livelihoods. As foreign vessels exploit Senegal's waters, local fishermen struggle to compete and sustain their way of life. The loss of control over their own resources perpetuates a cycle of poverty and dependency, undermining the long-term viability of Senegal's fisheries sector. We must revisit the existing mechanisms, improve and rationalize them so that they better respond to needs, employment and other income-generating activities. For young people and to encourage job creation, I intend to rely on a private sector supported by the state. On the basis of our priority needs, we will work together to indigenize our economy. The Senegalese are brave, but they are tired and expect from us solutions against fleshly life. The question of the cost of living concerns me particularly and requires all my attention. In the days to come, strong measures will be taken in this area after the consultations that I will undertake with the actors concerned. To truly address the needs and aspirations of Senegal's coastal communities, a paradigm shift towards equitable and sustainable fisheries management is imperative. This requires renegotiating agreements that prioritize local ownership and benefit sharing, as well as investing in the capacity building and infrastructure necessary for Senegal to harness and manage its marine resources effectively. Only then can we ensure a future where the prosperity of Senegal's coastal communities is not sacrificed at the altar of short-term profit. The situation worsens when considering the unintended consequences of inviting EU fishing companies into Senegalese waters. 
Beyond the immediate exploitation permitted by the agreement, the influx of foreign vessels acts as a catalyst for illegal, unreported, and unregulated IUU fishing activities. Senegal's rich waters become a magnet for opportunistic operators seeking to capitalize on lax enforcement and oversight. The presence of these illegal fishing vessels exacerbates the pressure on already depleted fish stocks, further threatening the livelihoods of local fishing communities. With increased competition for dwindling resources, artisanal fishermen find themselves marginalized and unable to compete with the industrial-scale operations of foreign fleets. As a result, they face diminished catches, reduced incomes, and heightened economic vulnerability. It is the desperation induced by the decline of the traditional fishing sector that drives some Senegalese to seek alternative livelihoods, often with grave consequences. I intend to establish a virtuous governance based on the ethic of responsibility and the obligation to be accountable. In addition, I will without delay initiate a bold policy of good economic and financial governance through the relentless fight against corruption and repression. Criminalization of tax fraud and illicit financial flows, the protection of whistleblowing, the fight against embezzlement of public funds and money laundering. Amnesty for applicants and their conditional profit sharing, self-denunciation, the publication of the reports of the Court of Auditors, as well as the exploitation of our natural resources, which according to the Constitution belong to the people. I will particularly attract the attention of my government thus, in addition to the already effective online implementation of mining oil and gas contracts in Senegal. I will proceed with the disclosure of the effective ownership of the extractive companies in accordance with the EITI standard on the audit of the gas and oil mining sector, and more sustained protection of local content for the benefit of the private sector national. Faced with a lack of economic prospects at home, many young Senegalese are lured by the promise of a brighter future in Europe, despite the inherent dangers of such migration routes. The transformation of local fishing boats into vessels of migration underscores the profound impact of the fisheries agreement on Senegal's social fabric. Communities once reliant on fishing for sustenance and income now grapple with displacement, dislocation, and despair. The erosion of traditional livelihoods not only undermines the cultural identity and resilience of coastal communities, but also fuels social unrest and instability. In light of these multifaceted challenges, newly elected Senegal President Fay is faced with the task of deciding to renew or cancel the lopsided fishing agreement. By prioritizing the needs and aspirations of local communities, promoting equitable and sustainable resource allocation, we can work towards a future where Senegal's coastal communities thrive in harmony with their marine environment. If you like the video I produce on this channel, take a little time to like and share the video.